Okay, I'm going to do an overview of world population focusing on the last, well, about 52 years altogether. Most of the statistics that I have are from the time period 1970 to 2021, and they're from the World Bank. But I'm going to begin with a broader overview of population growth from 1800 to roughly the current day. Uh, according to most sources, the global population is now over 8 billion. There are some that disagree, but it's, you know, roughly 8 billion. And so it's a good time to look at the history of population growth and also how population is distributed around the world. This chart shows the growth of the global population in billions. So it shows all the billion milestones. In 1800, the world population was roughly 1 billion. Nobody knows exactly what it was, of course, but that's a pretty good estimate. And it took until 1928 before it reached 2 billion. So it doubled over 128 years. Then uh, it reached 3 billion in 1960, which was only 32 years later and then 4 billion in 1975, which was only 15 years later. And since then, it has grown at a rate of about 1 billion every 12 years. So you see it went from exponential growth in the early 20th century up until about 1970, and then it kind of flattened out into linear growth. So in uh, 1987, which was 12 years after 1975, the world population reached 5 billion. In 1999, it reached 6 billion. That's another 12 years later. And then in 2011, it reached 7 billion. That's 12 years later. And then in 11 years, give or take, in 2022, it reached 8 billion. This chart shows the same thing, but only from 1970 until the year uh, 2020. One, I believe, which is the last date shown here. So you can see that over the last 50 odd years, it has grown almost perfectly linearly. Now, this is kind of weird because populations don't usually grow linearly. In fact, almost nothing in nature is linear. And this line is composed of a number of different lines that, as you'll see, are not linear. So it just coincidentally happened to add up to a straight line. And also, this straight line is the result of two different effects. One is an increasing population size, and the other is decreasing fertility. This chart shows the distribution of population by region, by the major regions of the world. The largest is East Asia and the Pacific which includes China, Japan, the Philippines, I think Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam. Pretty sure it includes Australia and New Zealand as well. And that has 30% of the global population. The next is South Asia with 24%. That includes India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and I think a few other smaller countries like Afghanistan. The next is Sub-Saharan Africa with 15%, followed by Europe and Central Asia with 12%, then Latin America and the Caribbean with 8%, the Middle East and North Africa with 6%, and then finally North America with 5%. And in this uh, breakdown, North America consists only of Canada and the United States. So very large in terms of land area, but not very large in terms of population. Uh, we can contrast that with the way that population was distributed in 1970. In 1970, East Asia and the Pacific was the largest region with 35% of the global population compared to 30% today. South Asia had 19% compared to 24% today. Sub-Saharan Africa had 8% compared to 15% today. Europe and Central Asia had 20% compared to 12% today. 
Latin America and the Caribbean had 8%, which is the same as today, or when I say today, I mean 2021, but you know, it doesn't make much difference. Uh, the Middle East and North Africa had 4% in 1970 compared to 6% today. And North America had 6% compared to 5% today. As you can see that not only has the global population grown, its distribution has changed significantly. And in particular, South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa have uh, increased significantly as a percentage of the whole while Europe and Central Asia has declined significantly as a percentage of the whole, East Asia and the Pacific has declined somewhat as well. Uh, and of course, so has North America. Uh, the Middle East and North Africa grew. So uh, the, the global demographics are changing. This compares the absolute numbers in 1970 and in 2021 by region, and it also gives the ratio between those numbers. So it shows how much each region has increased. In 1970, East Asia and the Pacific had roughly 1.3 billion, and in 2021, it had roughly 2.4 billion, and the ratio is 1.84. So it almost doubled, but not quite. In 1970, South Asia had 720 million, in 2021, it had 1.9 billion, and the ratio is 2.64, so it more than doubled. Sub-Saharan Africa had 294 million in 1970, and in 2021, it had about 1.2 billion, and the ratio was 4.02, so basically it quadrupled. Europe and Central Asia had 737 million in 1970, and in 2021 had 924 million. The ratio is 1.25, so it increased by 25%. Latin America and the Caribbean had 286 million in 1970, and in 2021 had 655 million. The ratio was 2.29, so essentially it doubled and a little more. The Middle East and North Africa had 138 million in 1970 and 486 million in 2021, and the ratio was 3.53, so it more than tripled. North America had 226 million in 1970 and 370 million in 2021, and the ratio was 1.63. So it didn't uh, double, it increased by about 60%. Uh, I believe that this number is a little bit low because it may not include illegal immigrants to the United States, but, you know, it's a reasonable approximation. All right, this chart shows the growth uh, of the regions, and the main point of this chart is to show how that straight line is composed of many different lines that have different behaviors. Some are curving upward, some are starting to curve downward. They're all increasing, but they're increasing at different rates. Some are increasing at a growing rate, like Sub-Saharan Africa. Others are uh, slowing down considerably, uh, like East Asia and the Pacific. South Asia was accelerating early on and then started to decelerate. You can see that there's been a very big difference between the growth rates in places like East Asia, South Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa compared to Europe and Central Asia and North America which were not flat, but did not grow that much. And of course, some of the growth in North America and Europe was due to immigration. Whereas uh, in the other places, in the other regions, almost no growth was due to immigration. And, and there was probably a net out migration of people from those other regions. This chart shows fertility by region during that time period from 1970 to 2020. This chart actually ends at 2020. It doesn't go to 2021. Uh, there's only The World Bank only has fertility data up to 2020 for some reason. So I just use those figures, but it gives you a pretty good idea of how things have changed. In 1970, Sub-Saharan Africa had a fertility rate of almost seven children per woman. Today, it is slightly below five. It's about 4.7 or something like that. The Middle East and North Africa also started out with a fertility rate of close to 7, 
but today it has fallen below 3. It is still above replacement. South Asia started out near 6 and has fallen to just above replacement, around you know 2.4, something like that. East Asia and the Pacific started out at about 5.5 and has since fallen considerably below replacement. It's around 1.6 or something like that. It's quite low. Latin America started out above 5 and has since fallen just below 2, so below replacement. Europe and Central Asia started out at about 2.5, has fallen below 2 considerably. And North America also had a more rapid decline in the 70s and then stayed below replacement until about 1990, at which point it went slightly above replacement but has since fallen back below replacement. So that's the history of fertility over the last 50 years or so. 1970 to 2020 is the time period. This table shows the top 10 countries by population and it gives their fertility rates. China has a population of about 1.4 billion and a fertility rate of 1.3, so well below replacement. India has a population of 1.4 billion, slightly below China's, and a fertility rate of 2.1. The United States has a population, or had in 2021, and also I think the United States is slightly an underestimate. But anyway, according to the data, it had a population of 331 million in 2021, and a fertility rate in 2020 of 1.6. Indonesia had 273 million in 2021, and a fertility rate of 2.2 in 2020. Pakistan had 221 million and a fertility rate of 3.6. So it's kind of interesting that, uh, you know, there's a big difference you'll see between India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. And you might think the difference between India and Pakistan is due to religion, Pakistan being Muslim. But Bangladesh is also Muslim, but it has a slightly different culture uh, and, and perhaps a slightly different biology. So um, different countries have reacted to modern civilization in different ways, and, and those behavioral differences can have a really profound effect on the demographics of the world. Okay, the next one, Brazil, I should have given the numbers. China's number one, India number two, United States number three, Indonesia number four, Pakistan number five. Brazil is number six with 213 million in 2021 and a fertility rate of 1.7, so below replacement. Nigeria is number seven with a population of 206 million and a fertility rate of 5.3. So a very young country, growing rapidly, very densely populated, and uh, like many, like really Sub-Saharan Africa is kind of like a ticking time bomb with very high fertility rates and um, you know people living close to the edge of poverty. So Nigeria is a good example. It, it is a rapidly modernizing country, but it's also a rapidly growing country with many internal problems. I think it's uh, right now in a state of economic crisis. So is Pakistan, right? And one of the problems with all this population growth in the uh, less developed parts of the world is that if they run into major problems like economic problems, famine, or natural disasters, it'll be much harder for the rest of the world to bail them out when they have such a large population. Okay, uh, the next one is Bangladesh. That's number eight on the list with 165 million people in 2021 and a fertility rate of two, slightly below replacement fertility. Russia had a population of 146 million in 2021, probably lower today. It's going into rapid decline as the, its baby boom generation is dying off. Uh, it already peaked. I think its peak was 148 million, and it has a fertility rate of about 1.5. Mexico is number 10 on the list with 129 million and a fertility rate of 1.9. So again, below replacement, just like Brazil. Latin America has gone from about five children per woman to around two. Profound effect of the birth control pill and modern civilization in general. 
I'll give the next 10 countries. I'll just go through them very quickly. Japan is number 11 with 126 million. It's actually in decline. I think its peak was 128 and a fertility rate of 1.3, so very, very low fertility. Ethiopia with 115 million, fertility rate of 4.2. Philippines with 110 million, fertility rate of 2.8. Egypt, population 102 million, fertility rate 3. Vietnam has, uh, or had in 2021, a population of 97 million. These figures become less accurate as you go down this list, I think. Some of them are a bit dubious, but that's what the World Bank told me. Fertility rate of two. So f fertility rate has gone down a lot there. Democratic Republic of the Congo. Population 90 million, fertility rate 6.2. Expect trouble there in the near future. Iran, population 88 million, fertility rate 1.7. So despite being a fundamentalist Muslim country with uh, a, a theocracy, essentially, their fertility rate plummeted below replacement. Turkey, 84 million, fertility rate 1.9, below replacement. Germany, population 84 million, fertility rate 1.5, and uh, Germany's population would be in serious decline if it wasn't for immigration. Thailand, population 70 million, fertility rate 1.3. Hopefully you found this interesting, and as always, thanks for listening.